Happy birthday by Wendy and Harry Devlin. Mr. Whisker's sister Sarah is coming for his birthday, announced Maggie. He is cooking, she said. Oh, no, cried Grandmother, putting both hands to her head. Poor Sarah. Do you remember the awful crab fritters and burnt chocolate cake we had at his house? A night to forget, Maggie said, smiling. Mr. Whiskers needs help, Grandmother decided. Let me call the sewing circle and Seth at the store. Down in his gray cottage by the ocean, Mr. Whiskers hummed as he cleaned his house for his persickety sister Sarah. He moved fishnets from the couch and lobster traps from the table. He kicked an empty box out the kitchen door. There! Beautiful, he said. Tired and hot, Mr. Whiskers fancied a swim. He thought about the coolness of Cedar Creek. He remembered the rope on the tree that swing into the water. Fresh, cold water. I'll get Grandmother M Maggie to pack a lunch and go with me, he chortled to himself. He shooed the moss away from his old striped bathing soup and quickly climbed into it. Cedar Creek, here I come, he sang out. An hour later, Maggie, Grandmother, and Mr. Whiskers stood on the sandy banks of Cedar Creek. Look, shouted Mr. Whiskers. The rope is still here. Grasping it tightly, he turned to Maggie. When I was a boy, I could make the biggest splash in the county. He looked over the swift water. A touch of fear clutched at him. Wasn't that a big drop for an old sea captain? Suddenly, Maggie called. Look, Mr. Whiskers, quick, there's a little dog floating on the log. He looked and saw a small white dog bobbing in the water above the rapids. Now Mr. Whiskers didn't have time to be afraid. The log and the dog would soon be carried into the waterfall below. He took a running start, sailed through the air on the rope like a giant bumblebee, and landed with a mighty splash in front of the log. Paddling from behind, he steered the log carefully to the shore. Wonderful, cried Maggie with delight. You are a hero, said Grandmother, clapping her hands. A hero. Mr. Whiskers trailed out of the water, holding the dog close. It's just a puppy, Mr. Whiskers allowed the dog to lick his ears and bite his nose. But isn't he a beauty? At lunchtime, he fed the puppy half his, of his sandwich and chased him through the grass on hands and knees. Sarah never let me have a dog, mused Mr. Whiskers aloud. She thought they brought too much mud into the house. He sat up straight. Suffering codfish. I want this dog, Maggie. I'm going to take him home. We can't keep him, said Maggie gently. He has a tag that gives his owner's name and address. We will have to return him today. Mr. Whiskers was quiet on the walk back. He held the puppy tight in his arms. Here, he said gruffly when they reached town. You take him back. I've got to tend to some lobster traps. Maggie went on her way with the puppy. Cheers, tears, and happiness greeted her when she returned the pup to his owners. They asked to hear every detail of the rescue. They wanted to know all about Mr. Whiskers. The night passed and Mr. Whiskers' birthday dawned with a bright sun and a good breeze. Up early, he stamped about his kitchen sorting recipes. Should I have crab fritters and chocolate cake, he wondered. Around four o'clock, oh, Grandmother looked over the dunes to Mr. Whiskers' house. She heard a howl. 
Then his kitchen window opened suddenly, and a bowl of something sticky came pouring out. Ten minutes later, the back door opened with an explosion of burned muffins that landed in the bushes. Soon after came a cloud of smoke, and Mr. Whiskers leaped into the yard with a charred pan and a small towel on fire. He turned the garden hose on the whole menu and collapsed on the back stairs. Suffering codfish, I hate birthdays. When he looked up again, a parade of his good friends was hiking over the dunes into his backyard, each one carrying a covered dish. Happy birthday, Mr. Whiskers. Congratulations, they cried. Mr. Whiskers began to brighten up. Since you forgot to ask us, we came and brought our own dinner, said Grandmother Tartly. Thanks, old friend, Mr. Whiskers whispered into Grandmother's ear. When Sarah arrived, she found a linen-covered picnic table with wildflower bouquets, a good supper of steamed clams and cold turkey, salads and muffins covered the table, and there was lemonade for everyone. Where's Maggie? Mr. Whiskers asked suddenly. Grandmother hesitated for a moment. Then she smiled and pointed. Maggie was running down the path with a puppy in her arms just like the one Mr. Whiskers had rescued. Maggie was breathless. He's the last of the litter that the the dog you rescued came from. He's yours as a reward. Mr. Whiskers' eyes were shining and a beautiful smile reached across his face. Suffering codfish, Maggie. He's no bigger than a horseshoe crab. Big enough to bring mud into the kitchen, Sarah said primly. I hope he brings mud into the kitchen and upstairs onto my bed, where he is going to sleep, announced Mr. Whiskers. Sarah sniffed. You're impossible. Now Grandmother's beautiful pink cake was placed in front of Mr. Whiskers. Every boy Betty joined in to sing happy birthday to you. Mr. Whiskers closed his eyes blissfully. He knew he would soon have to blow the blazing candles out. But for once in his life, he couldn't think of a single thing in this whole wide world to wish for. Not one. The end.